Complex numbers, addition, subtraction, and multiplication. Here we're looking at two numbers. U is equal to 1 plus 3i, and V is equal to 4 plus 2i. Find U plus V. This is no more difficult than if they said U is equal to 1 apple and 3 oranges, and this was 4 apples and 2 oranges. Could you add the apples together and the oranges together? And of course you could. So it's exactly the same. So what we do is we expand it and we get the expression, but we write all the, well, 1 plus 3i, 4 plus 2i. We decide to group them, not in terms of apples and oranges, but in terms of real numbers and the ones then that are from the imaginary component. So I'm now going to rearrange them. So the 1, and the f 1 plus 3i, 4 plus 2i, the 1 and the 4 are real. So I'm grouping those here. That's the 1 and that's the 4. Whereas the imaginary ones are 3i and 2i. So I just group the two together. 1 plus 4 is 5. 3i plus 2i is 5i. Or I could have added them here. 1 plus 3i, 4 plus 2i. Group them under one after the other. Apples and oranges, it should be exactly the same. Drawing this on a graph, here's 1 plus 3i, 4 plus 2i, and 5 plus 5i. We can imagine this really in terms of east and north, if we wished, and said one step east and three north, four step east and two north. And if we added the two together, and from this point here, we decided to add this number, 1 east and 3 north, we'd end up here. Or from this point, if we went 4 east and 2 north, we'd end up there. So we can see that addition on, in complex numbers is commutative. So we can go this plus this, or this plus this, add them in any direction we want, we end up in the same place. So 1 plus 3i, 4 plus 2i is 5 plus 5i. Whether you add up one or the other first, it doesn't matter. We now look at subtraction. Here we've got a number 5 plus 5i, and we want to subtract one from the other. So we want to start off with a lot, 5 apples and 5 oranges, in this case 5 plus 5i, and we want to subtract this amount from it. So we just write the equation out, z minus z1, so the first part is the z taking down, then the second one with the brackets around it. And we undo the brackets, 5 plus 5i minus 1 minus 3i. But again, we've got the problem with some of these are real and some are imaginary. So we group the reals together, and we say that real goes there, and that real goes there, watching the sign, and the others are imaginary, and they go the other side. So grouping them together, 5 minus 1 is 4, and 5i minus 3i is 2i. Or we could have done it here, written the top one and then the bottom, 5 minus 1 is 4, 5i minus 3i is 2i. Visually, what's happening there is we go to 5 plus 5i and we subtract 1 plus 3i. We say take 1, uh, 3, uh, we say take, uh, what is it, 3i from it, 1, 2, 3, and 1 from it, and we end up here. Or if we take 4 plus 2i from it, we take 2i from it, and 1, 2, 3, 4, and end up there. So it's just a subtraction, one from the other. Just as we did here, take one from the other and we can see it visually. The next step in complex numbers is multiplication. And multiplication allows us to take two numbers. This is Z1 and this is Z2. I plus, 1 plus I by 3 plus I. And the Americans call this the, the FOIL method where you have A plus B times C plus D. The Americans say you use the FOIL. You use the first ones, A by C, then the outsides, A by D, then the insides, B, plus C, B by C, and then the last, B, D. So it's exactly the same. You've done this for lots of different types. So you do exactly the same process here. You have two numbers in brackets, and we multiply them out. The first by the first gives us... Well, it's 1 times 3 plus i, then i times 3 plus i. So 1 by 3 is 3, 1 by i is i, i by 3 is 3i, and i by i is i squared. So that's our answer 
at this point. But we do note that by definition, I squared is equal to minus 1. So that gets changed here to a minus 1. Now we've got 3 plus i plus 3i minus 1. Now we can group these in terms of reals and imaginaries. We have two reals, a 3 and a minus 1, and they get into there, and the two, the two imaginaries get added up. 3 minus 1 becomes 2, i plus 3i is 4i. So this is multiplication now in terms of its representation. Just bear with me. Uh, I'll just grab a ruler. And multiplication, what we're doing here is we're going to multiply 1 plus i, this number, by 3 plus i. So this is z1 and this is z2. And the answer we're going to get is z3. Hard to see exactly what's going on here. Here's a small distance, a relatively bigger one, and a bigger one. But let's do the maths. 1 plus i, 3 plus i is, is equal to 2 plus 4i. How do we get that? Well, we've just done it there. 1 plus i, 3 plus i gave us 2 plus 4i. We had a complex number, a complex number giving us a complex number. And there's the maths on it. Now... What we look at here are some observations that are quite powerful when it comes to multiplication. When you multiply z1 by z2, you get a z3. You get a complex number. But what's noted here, and these observations are hugely important in all computer games, really massively important. z3 is z2 by z1. In other words, the modulus, this distance here, by that distance there, gave us a bigger distance. So as long as this distance was bigger than 1, which it is, because 1 and 1 would give us, that's about root 2, that's a bigger number. Do you remember the 3 plus i? I think we had that, that was a root 10 or something. So they're all bigger than 1, and that means that the modulus of the answer is getting bigger. But a far more interesting observation is this. Theta 3 is theta 1 plus theta 2. What actually happens when you multiply complex numbers is that this angle here plus this angle here gives us this angle here. When you multiply something by a complex number, it rotates. Imagine something that you multiplied by something. It just didn't get bigger and smaller, but it rotated. That's pretty cool. Just imagine all the computer games from Super Mario onwards where something has to rotate or something has to get bigger having eaten something or smaller. How is all that done? All of it is done with complex numbers. It cannot be done without it. So here's an example of an observation that says if you multiply 3 plus i by 1 plus 2i, what you can do here is you can actually get here you've got this answer and here you've got this answer and you've got the whatever other answer here. But if you multiply, this is a different sum now, not the same as this, but 3 plus i by 1 plus 2i. The angles here, the angle for 3 plus i is 18.4. The angle here is 63.4. Add the two together, you've got, sorry, you've got 81.86. So you can see they're almost at the 1. In fact, if you think about it, i is a strange number. I'll just do it here. I'll get a different graph if I can. But this is the number here, 1, not, or real. This number here is i, this number here is minus 1, and this number here is minus i. Isn't that right? This is 1 plus not i, not plus i, minus 1 plus not i, and not minus i. Would people agree there are the four points? If I take a measure here, just to this point here, 
Just the unit standard one, one plus naught i. And I multiply one times i. What do you get if you multiply one times i? i. You get this. What happens if you do i by i? i squared. And what's i squared? Minus one. That's over here, isn't it? What happens if you do it again? Minus one by i? Minus i, would it? And minus i by i would give us one. In other words, every time I multiply by i, I'm rotating through 90 degrees. That's what complex numbers do. They rotate the screen around. So even if you've got a picture and you want to turn it so you can see it in a different 90 degree angle or 45 degree angle, back somewhere in the bowels of your program there, just multiplying by i.